Caribbean Carnival, a time to celebrate the culture and contributions that the Caribbean islands have made to the UK. In Nottingham, the Caribbean Carnival began in the year 1970 and was formed by a group of West Indians that had migrated here. Many say that the roots of the Caribbean Carnival were planted in Trinidad, where it was all about celebrating the abolition of slavery and the slave trade. Others say that in the UK it was formed as a reminder of what the Caribbean migrants had left behind. Either way, the carnival has become a truly multicultural festival that celebrates music, food, dance and community spirit. Yeah, it's not a black thing, it's not a white thing, it's a Caribbean thing, it's a multicultural thing. And we need to preserve the heritage of carnival for the little ones coming up. What's your favourite part of carnival? Seeing the kids do the thing. Just seeing the kids do the thing and seeing the crowd get entertained and come down and think, yeah. Oh, it's very colourful, isn't it? It's very colourful, very loud, um, and it's just wonderful. Everyone seems to be happy and just enjoying the day. It's lovely. It's really good. Yeah, it was good, man. Yes. Music's good. Drinks are good, obviously. Fully, fully in my element. Yeah. So I love it. Really yeah, good. Really yeah, good. yeah. I found it good. Very exciting. Very funny. And what was your favourite part? Um, the dancing and the food. Everything. The food. <laughs> Everything, really. And what's your favourite part of it? Music, yeah, of course. Music all yeah, the way, yeah, always the music. And yeah, the girls. food as well. And the girls. <laughs> and the girls. <laughs> Although Jamaica seems to take the credit, it was actually a group of West Indians, mainly from the island of St. Kitts, who held the first carnival parade in Nottingham. There have always been disputes about where in the UK the Caribbean carnival originated. But here in Nottingham, we do know that it began in the year 1970. The founder and director of a mobile social history project called Museum And, which features the contributions made by Caribbeans to British society, believes that she knows where it all began. Carnival in the UK started in Nottingham and it started in the Meadows. And then from that, every other city, we were fast followed by Notting Hill, which has become bigger uh, and more international than ours, but nevertheless, it was a Nottingham first. And then the carnival was a way of bringing the community together, especially after the riots. So prior to the carnival being created, we had the Nottingham riots. Again, they were the first um, riots in, in the UK. So this was a way of healing the wounds and showing that people can work together and there are things that we share in common. There have actually been two riots in Nottingham linked to race. On the 23rd of August, 1958, Nottingham saw its famous race riot, which was put down to a culmination of simmering tension, sparked finally over opposition to interracial relationships. However, it is worth mentioning that by this point, the post-war economic boom that Nottingham had enjoyed was coming to an end, and by the mid-1950s, like most industrial cities, it brought an end to the brief period of prosperity which had been an incentive for Caribbean migration to the UK. Then, in 1981, the era of Heights and Green, where many Caribbean people were housed in decaying high-rise flats, turned into a battleground, which subsequently triggered riots across England. But today, in 2016, Nottingham Carnival is a fantastic example of community cohesion, and on the surface, is a reflection of how multicultural Britain is. But, if the community is truly united, what is the need for UK branches of the Black Lives Matter movement? Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter is a group that campaigns against alleged systematic racism and violence against African Americans. It was set up in the USA after a man that killed 17-year-old Trayvon Martin was acquitted. Since then, they have campaigned about broader issues including racial profiling, police brutality and racial inequality in the United States' criminal justice system. For example, they campaign about the fact that in the USA, black males between the age of 15 and 34 are nine times more likely to be killed by police officers even though they only make 2% of the US population. Quite understandably, the Black Lives Matter group argue that racism is still very much alive in America. 
Which begs the question, why is the black community in the UK so concerned with a movement that was created to tackle issues of social injustice against African Americans? Well, although the UK isn't perfect, it isn't half as bad as the USA. In one way you can say that, but really it's a global, worldwide um, situation and it's, it's kind of, I mean, to be in a bad situation but to be happy that it's not as bad as someone else's is not really a, a progressive, forward-looking um, position. I think um, as African people we should see ourselves as human beings and want the best for ourselves and not just be content because we're not being shot in the, in the street. We, we are still, I think, an oppressed group here in the, the UK as well. You know, Europeans in different places, they have slightly different um, cultures and the, the American culture is very brash because of how America was formed, how it was colonized. It was built on the blood of the native um, Americans. And every 4th of July, they celebrate that they've exterminated a whole nation of people who were a very uh, important nation of people to, to, you know, to the earth. So, you know, America has got that history. You know, Britain then has a um, slightly different, but the same. So Britain was the architect, really, of um, slavery and the growth of capitalism. You know, but they, they managed to build up institutions that hide and conceal what they're doing. So it's not as brash and it's not as in your face, but it's still, it's still actually there. The seeds of the Black Lives Matter Nottingham campaign were planted in 2015 at a Black October Dialogues Conference, where members of the public got to hear from the Black Lives Matter movement in America. One of the organisers said that the conference was so inspirational, they thought it was necessary to create a strand of the Black Lives Matter movement in the UK. We need to start in Nottingham, we need to start with us. But and if it isn't violence, then what makes the black community in Nottingham identify with the movement? To me, it means that inequality needs to stop. Black Lives Matter means that somebody out there cares, somebody understands my pain, somebody understands where I'm coming from, and I'm not on my own, and that's what it means when Black Lives Matter. If somebody was ill and said, if somebody was stood here now in town with a, a box collecting for cancer, nobody's going to come along and say, why are you collecting for cancer? All Ill illnesses matter. We know they do, but at that particular time, those people were collecting for cancer. And at this particular time, we're trying to raise awareness of the injustice to black people, and there's nothing wrong in that. But I'm a black individual, and my life matters, so yeah. Black Lives Matter, first of all, means it's a sad day means it's sad that anyone has to gather here today to even mention the term Black Lives Matters. At the end of the day, for those of the rhetoric of all, all lives matter, just to confirm, obviously we all know that all lives matter to us. Do, they, do all lives matter to everyone? Unfortunately not, and that is the reason we have to say Black Lives Matter. People are afraid of change, they're afraid of things they don't understand. What I ask you to do if you don't, are not familiar with the black community, get to know somebody. Yeah, get to know somebody and you will see why Black Lives Matter. Although I love the sentiment that change can be achieved through integration, how true is this when black people have been known to have lived in the UK since at least the Roman Empire and are documented from as early as the 15th century? Many have heard of the tales of men like Colardo Equiano, who was sold into slavery at the age of 11 and worked hard to buy his freedom, then later spoke out against the slave trade. And George Africanus, who was given away as a gift in the 1760s and by the year 1818 became a freeholder in Nottingham and also worked hard to create change rather than asking for permission. So what more, other than protesting, can the black community do now to make a difference? This is a, this is a capitalist country. Uh, the key aspect to actually live in is to engage in capitalism. We are still workers. We still came over here in the 60s and the 50s and 60s as workers. We are still principal workers right? and we're not entrepreneurs. So it's, it's about how we accept what today's world is and how do we accept our place in it. It's not to let somebody else determine who you are. It's to determine who you are yourself and actually place yourself in a position which you want to contribute. Not about how somebody will make you work, it's how you want to work. This is the first world. So become the first person. 
The African Caribbean National Artistic Centre is a place where members of the African Caribbean community can go to learn new things, socialise and celebrate their culture. Daroy hints that the black community should start participating in a capitalist society in order to create change and that the Caribbean community has failed to change its mindset from the Windrush era where in the 1950s, according to the UK census, there was an estimated total of 2,024 Jamaicans alone living in the UK. When they arrived, they were greeted with abuse and booklets on how to live the English way. However, only 4% of them had planned on staying here and the rest wanted to save and go back home. This didn't happen and a large part of the Caribbean community started to call the UK home. Places like the Atna Centre are reminders that the black community have built a strong presence in Nottingham, especially in places like Alcorton Road, where the first of many Caribbean shops was set up in 1959 in order to provide goods that people from the islands were longing for, which slightly contradicts Delroy's earlier statement. However, he believes that there is more to it and that maybe Caribbean people are clinging on to their culture a little bit too much. I, I, I was always curious with you because I've always grown up in this country and the, the box I've been ticking has been Afro-Caribbean. Right? Now, for those of us who are not good at geography, we don't even know how far away the Caribbean is right, from, being, from Britain. Right? And in truth, if you ask the majority of people, right, where in the Caribbean do you come from? Right? They'll tell you Jamaica. Like you're saying, where, okay, where in Jamaica do you come from? The majority of them don't know. Right? What they do know is they come from Nottingham, right? And what we need to do is actually clear up the mindset right, of people not being confident about themselves, right? If you understand that you were born in Nottingham and you come from Nottingham, right? And you hear this, this story that you come from the Caribbean that you've never been to, right? Then that creates a, that creates a, a, a process of, of doubt in your mind about who you are and do I belong here. If someone looks at you and tells you, you don't belong here, because you've had this element of doubt about where you are, who you are, right, and where you come from, you'll, you'll hesitate and ask yourself the question, do I really not come from here? Well, if you don't come from here, where do you come from? And the point basically is, we need to actually put our foot firmly in the ground of saying, this is where I come from. Right? If you don't come from here, then you can say, okay, well, I come from the Caribbean, but name where you come from. If you can't name where you come from, actually, you come from Nottingham. So maybe protesting isn't enough, and that in order for African Caribbean people to change their lives, they need to change the way they think. But surely, campaigning and raising awareness of the issues is a good start. I think Black Lives Matter means it's, it's one level of response. There are lots of other responses, you know, there's the law, there's international um, law, there's self-organisation, um, there's economic independence, there's consciousness raising, there, there's, there's so many things that are going on. There's lots of organising, lots of planning, lots of things being done and each of us has a responsibility to become part of something. That's how we'll change the situation, not by sitting back and critiquing what other people are doing. So even though for myself, Black Lives Matter is not the, the total answer, I think it's a positive um, response and I think we should go to the next level, which is that African lives matter. African people need a power base in this world. We have our own continent, our own homeland. We should make more efforts to see it develop so that it, 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 it can protect us. It seems to me that on the one hand, the Caribbean Carnival represents the fact that the vast majority of the black community in Nottingham acknowledge the integration and cultural acceptance that has taken place in Britain and recognise that this was largely achieved through the persistence and protest from previous generations. However, on the other hand, the Black Lives Matter protests uncover the fact that there's still a lot more that needs to be done and that a large percentage of the black British population still don't feel truly equal.